With the ability to play games rather hindered these days, we're all looking for new hobby projects to keep us busy. So what better time than now for Terrain Essentials to thud heavily onto Wargames Illustrator's review desk. Behind its rather unassuming hardback cover are 192 pages and a lifetime's worth of in-depth terrain building advice across great looking full colour spreads. It's written by Mel Bose, who's also known as the Terrain Tutor, and the cover bears the subtitle, A Book About Making Wargaming Terrain. Well, that is exactly what this book is, but if Mel, our publisher Dave Taylor Miniatures, were more prone to some promotional hyperbole, that subtitle could very easily be the must-have terrain-making bible that you've been waiting for. Because we reckon that you're going to find this book has a prominent place on your shelf or by your side as you work on projects. The book does everything a hobby guide should, and it truly excels in the ways that it does it. The layout's clean from the outset, and the short introduction features many of the elements that are to come. Sharp photos and equally sharp writing, which strikes a balance between entertaining and informative. Moving past the content, it's into the Essentials Glossary, where really nice illustrations join the list of positives. These are characterful little illustrations of Mel that draw attention to areas of interest. They're rather charming, and they serve three main purposes. They highlight top tips, of which there are plenty. They let you know there's a safety warning somewhere, and they introduce us to Mel's rules. Getting to pages eight and nine, there's a section called Time and Attention. These pages are used to advise that although this book will give you the skills to complete impressive pro projects, uh, what's actually in the book are the foundations, the terrain essentials, rather than lengthy step-by-steps on specific gaming boards or full landscapes or cities. And that's no bad thing. Um, it's also a chance for Mel to show off some of his bigger bits of work and let us know that we're in really capable hands. He clearly knows what he's doing and hopefully soon we will too. Pages 10 to 17 go over planning, a part of terrain making Mel sees as rather important, with his triad system applied to builds, balancing projects between durability, realism and functionality. You instantly get a feel for the clean, sharp layout of the book here. It's an easy read too. A good amount of subsections break up the lengthier flows of text in these sections, and the visual stimulus is varied, with most concepts illustrated by pictures, diagrams, photos, lists and more. Whatchamacallit, pages 18 to 43, is a really comprehensive look at the hundreds of different tools and materials that Mel uses in his builds, and he offers up advice on them all. A lot of his top tips here are based around money saving options, which is very nice to see in a section packed with sometimes expensive hobby gear that's been accumulated through Mel's many years in his workshop. And if like us, you saw there were some safety warnings ahead in the book and you might have pshawed not really interested in that. However, some of them, they're not just good advice, but they're actually really interesting. We read Mel's warning about mixing hot glue and super glue with real curiosity. And we have to say, we hope Mel isn't speaking from too brutal a personal experience here when he describes the pain the fumes can cause. If we have any criticism of the book so far, it's that the watchman call it's shown in the pictures here don't get captions. The text on the pages does relate to them, but it'd be nice to see specifics at a glance. There's a lack of picture captions throughout actually. That's probably a design choice and one that's most often absolutely fine. But here, in this chapter, a key to things that are being shown, that would have been really nice. The Practicals chapter takes us to page 67 and moves us from the tools of the trade to the tricks of the trade, or to be more precise, common methods and techniques. There's workflow in general before elements such as sticking, cutting, glooping, and painting get the full treatment. So, at page 68, we finally get to a terrain-specific element, and actually look at the making of a gaming board itself, along with the shapes to go on it. Great stuff once more. Um, we quickly slip our way, however, into Mel's deep thoughts here, with a section on warping parts from pages 74 to 77, and on modularity from page 78 to 81. Not only is this all incredibly useful, but it also keeps the book very fresh and entertaining as you read through it. You'll probably be flipping back and forth through this book for years to come as you work on various projects, but the book is actually interesting enough that you could treat it as some heavy, at least in weight, bedtime reading, should you be so inclined. By now, you may have noticed that unlike many books out there, 
and as Mel himself says early on, the aim of the book is to equip the reader with fundamentals. Where another guide might give the reader a series of steps to end up with a fine looking bunker, well, Mel's guide gives the reader confidence and skills to create their own different approaches and build not just a fine looking bunker, but to embed it into a fine looking gaming board, surround it with rock outcrops, rivers, hills, trees and more. There's a proverb that comes to mind here. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man from terrain essentials and he'll still be peckish, but he can feast, at least metaphorically, on the board building knowledge he's imbued with. Um, well, I think it goes something like that. Anyway, groundwork's covered through pages 82 to 91, with some far more specific step-by-step -step approaches, but these are ones that could be used on many projects. There's layered aggregates, bonded aggregates, texture gloop, filler stipple, and a follow-up from Mel to let us know which can be used and where. With those basics established, he moves to the landscaping, bringing more height to groundwork before providing some painting techniques for parched, dry, damp and soaked earth. More specialist techniques, such as cracked earth, they're not overlooked either, but they get included once the basics have been established, later on in the chapters. Pages 92 to 95 cover an incredibly important area of the hobby, colour, and this is done in another of Mel's deep thought sections. He really gets into it, nicely summarising a complex area in just four pages, with advice that will serve you well. And it's here that we had placed one of the two ribbon bookmarks attached to the book. One of these is black, one's green, and they're great for keeping tabs on the sections relevant to your current project. Grasswork is a sizable section, from pages 96 to 105, covering all your flocking needs and more, and finishing up with another of Mel's deep thoughts on making your own bulk quantities of the materials. Rocks and Hills is where more landscaping gets explained, with a focus on painting techniques at the start before moving to tips on building with various materials. At page 124, we get to the section on trees and hedges. Mel seems to really know his stuff here. The end results look totally pro, but thanks to Mel's guidance, they all feel remarkably achievable. With such fantastic tree advice springing up all over the place, we wonder if Mel might actually be part end. And now, at page 140, it's time to get wet. Not just in rivers and lakes, but in mud and puddles too. Again, a whole toolkit of techniques is here that we'll be able to call upon in future projects. There are actually various cracked water features in the Wargames Illustrated ter Terrain Collection at the moment, so the section on mistakes and fixes at the end of the chapter is going to be getting marked by another of the ribbons, for our own future reference. Winter Has Come, another of Mel's Deep Thoughts, finishes off this section including snow and ice. The guide fully finishes with advice on making your own buildings. This is perhaps where many other guides would begin their step-by-steps, but we're here on page 166 just getting into it. We're already past bursting point with the techniques that we've learned though, and we can now take on these non-natural forms with ease. Mel covers a wooden shack, an urban ruin, and a historical roundhouse. This section rounds out with a great looking fantasy ruined inn and sci-fi ruined city that get a closer focus, and then there's a final deep thoughts on getting the most out of commercial kits. Last of all, uh, there's a thank you in the book from publisher Dave, sending it out to the Kickstarter backers who, well, kickstarted this whole shebang, back through crowdfunding in 2019. And thanks to them indeed, their backings led to a book that will serve us all really well, even those with just the vaguest interest in making scenery. But on the whole, we suspect that this will become a bit of a classic in hobby circles, and probably going to be about as ageless as one of Mel's own beautiful scratch-built trees. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.